Hi there everyone and welcome back to our second webinar in our series of exam technique webinars. This week we are going to be looking at two main things. We're going to be looking at a pre-exam checklist, so things that you need to remember before the exam, things that we need to think about bringing to the exam with us on the day. And also we'll be talking a little bit about things that we need to be mindful of on the day of the exam in order to do our very best um, to ensure success and to ensure that we maximize our grade. So as you can see there in front of you, um, these webinars are relevant for all levels, whether it is junior cert or junior cycle or leaving cert, uh, higher or ordinary level, regardless of the level that you're studying, these webinars will be very, very useful in order to maximize your grade. So as mentioned, this is part two. You can catch up on part one, which looked at the exam paper structure and the changes in the exam paper uh, specifically for 2022 on our Math Tutor website. And just keep an eye out for over the next couple of weeks, we have um, the final two parts of our webinar um, on time management and how to best to avoid errors in the exam. And you can also access our free exam technique booklet on the Math Tutor dot ie forward slash booklet so loads of useful pointers and useful hints and tips um, based on years of experience in that booklet also so let's get straight in um, our pre-exam checklist first of all so these are things that we need to remember to have organized before the exam so a really good idea to have these organized not just the night before but maybe the weekend before the exam and um, before paper one and again making sure that they're all uh, ready and set up for paper two exam as well if you're a leaving cert student so first thing we need to remember is to bring a mathematical set into the exam with us. So normally these can be bought um, as one box, as a set in a shop, um, and all of the following items should be present in your mathematical set. So you're gonna have a small ruler, you're gonna find set squares in there, a protractor for measuring angles, a compass, a HB pencil, an eraser, and a sharpener. You could buy all of these things separately, but normally it is just much more convenient to have it all in the one set and make sure that any mathematical set you buy has all of the following components in it. Normally used for geometry questions, which are normally, if you're a Leaving Cert student, paper two, um, but may be useful for paper one. So I would recommend bringing it uh, if you're a Leaving Cert student, bringing it both days, paper one and paper two. Obviously, junior cycle students, you have the one paper, so make sure that you have your mathematical set for that also. Um, make sure you have plenty of pens and pencils, so don't um, arrive into the exam with just one pen. Uh, make sure you have plenty to choose from. Uh, I know some people, some people like to use different colours in an exam, but I would recommend using blue or black ink only and we'll see in a couple of minutes that at the front of the exam papers it normally uh, states that you must only use blue or black ink don't use your fancy gel pens yes they might smell really nice and uh, look really nice and have fabulous colors but they're not very convenient for the maths exam um, the examiner is not going to care what color your work is in. Uh, they're just going to be interested in the quality of your work. So blue or black ink only. Um, yes, you may use pencils. Uh, make sure it is a HB pencil and no lighter. And they can be used for graphs, for diagrams and for any constructions that may come up. Try not to use your HB pencil for the rest of the exam. So I know a lot of students uh, do like to do their maths in pencils for various reasons, but I we recommend using uh, blue or black ink and only using your pencil for graphs, diagrams and constructions. Make sure that you bring a highlighter with you um, and I'll show you the use for that in a second. So right here we have just an example of a question. A company makes biodegradable paper cups in the shape of a right circular cone. Each cup has a radius of 3.3 centimetres and a slant height of 9 centimetres as shown. Show that the vertical height of the cup is 8.37 centimetres, correct to two decimal places. So you have lots of information there and it's a very, very useful tip. It's a very, very good thing to do to highlight the main pieces of information here, just to make it stand out for yourself. 
So we have a right circular cone. The radius is 3.3 centimeters. So you can see I'm highlighting that there in the question, but I'm also highlighting it because that's shown in the diagram. And if it wasn't shown in the diagram, I can always mark it on my own diagram. And the other piece of information is my slant height. So along the side there, the slanted part of the cone is nine centimeters. So I've highlighted the pieces of information in the question that they're giving me, but I'm also highlighting the, the parts of the question that they want me to show. Okay, or the answer, in other words. So they want me to show that the vertical height of the cup, and you can see I've marked that there in green on my diagram, but I've also highlighted it in green in the question. And that important part at the end, correct to two decimal places. So that's going to be important to get at that final mark. Um, if we don't round up correctly, remember it's, it's your 9 out of 10 or your 4 out of 5 marks, depending on the number of marks going for that part of the question. So that's why a highlighter is very, very useful. It basically highlights or accentuates um, the information, the important information um, in the question and the information that's also required of you. So if you have a couple of different color highlighters, absolutely by all means, bring those into the exam as well. Uh, big one, if you make a mistake in the exam, so you can see here, I have done out a little bit of a solution, but I've realized at the very end that I've made a mistake. So I've realized at the end of the question, or maybe when I'm checking back over my paper in those couple of minutes at the end, I've realized that I've made a mistake. What I absolutely do not do is use tipex. Okay, so I do not ever use tipex in an exam. I simply draw two lines through my solution to show the examiner that actually I've made a mistake here. And then I write a little note on the on the uh, solution saying see page for extra work or see uh, extra pages at the end for correct work so that guides the examiner and tells the examiner that yes the student has made a mistake here but they can still read what you've made what you've done and then they can go to the very back page for extra work it is vital that you label any extra work clearly, as you can see there, it is mentioned on that page with your question number and the part of the question. So this was from uh, 6B, part two, and I'm clearly labeling so that the examiner knows which question I am working on in that extra work page, okay? So again, never ever use Tipex in the exam. Um, we're always just drawing a clear line or two lines through the work if you've made a mistake. And um, that, that makes it easy for the examiners to still see what you've done and then guide them to the extra pages at the end. And obviously, if you need any extra paper than what you've already been given in your uh, exam booklet, just put your hand up and ask your superintendent for extra paper. That won't be a problem. Um, also, just while we have this up on the screen in front of us, it is really, really important that you keep all of your work inside those black boxes. Um, as you may be aware, the maths exams will be marked online this year, as they were last year. And it is vital that all work is inside those boxes so that it can be clearly read on the computer. So keep all of your work inside those black boxes. Um, just going back then to our pre-exam checklist, it is, as you know, very, very important that we have a calculator and a scientific calculator at that. Um, don't go buying yourself a new calculator the day before the exam um, because you might not be you might not be used to, to, to the how it works to the layout of the buttons on the calculator and you don't need that added pressure on the day of the exam trying to figure out how the calculator works. So use your own calculator. Um, make sure that it is a calculator that is valid for your junior cycle or your leaving cert exam and make sure it's in good working order. So if the screen is becoming a little bit faded or if there's a mark on the screen, it may just need a new battery, okay? Um, so that is a pretty simple problem to solve. Um, make sure you know how to reset it. So normally on the back cover of the calculator, it will give instructions on how to reset it and make sure that you know how to change the mode of your calculator. So sometimes you need to use a different mode for statistics or for functions. Um, I would really strongly recommend that you bring a spare calculator into the exam if you can 
just in case that um, your calculator for some reason, it might be the battery, it might be the screen got damaged, for some reason it might not work in the exam. So a really, really good tip is to bring a spare calculator into the exam. Um, if your battery in the calculator has not been changed in a couple of years, really, really recommend you go and you change that battery, even though it might not seem that the battery is um, dying or running out. Um, go and go and change the battery just to be on the safe side. Um, any of you higher level math students, um, leaving cert students, see our videos on correlation coefficient and how how to calculate the standard deviation. So you'll you'll have access to those videos on the mathstutor.ie website. So um, for statistics, there they are very very useful and required for the leaving cert higher level course. Um, okay, so you will be familiar with these instructions if you have been practicing sample papers or past papers. And these are the instructions from the State Exams Commission on the exam paper. So I've gone through most of this already, but we'll just have a look through it again. Make sure to write your answers in blue or black pen, but you can use your pencil for graphs and for diagrams. So don't use your pencil for showing the rest of your work. The exam booklet, as I mentioned, will be scanned. So make sure that you write inside the answer area. So inside those books, inside those black boxes, apologies. Make sure you write all answers into the booklet. There's space at the, at the back for extra work. And if you need to use extra paper, you can get that from your superintendent on the day. Your formula and tables booklet, that will be given to you on the day, so don't bring in your own. You will get a new copy on the day that is returned at the end of the exam. Um, make sure that you show all your work, so your relevant supporting work. Even if you've put something into the calculator, show it on the page. So uh, don't assume that the person that's marking your script knows what you've put into the calculator. Show everything on the page. If you leave out your units, so centimeters or meters, whatever the relevant or the appropriate units of measurement are in the question, um, you will be docked marks. And you may lose marks, the second point there, you may lose marks if your answers are not given in the simplest form where relevant. So that's a matter of reading your question really, really carefully and um, simplifying as best you can. And there's a little space there for writing the make and the model of your calculator there. So you've a couple of minutes at the start of the exam as we went through in um, the last webinar on um, the structure of the exam. Um, you've mar you have uh, time at the start, you have a couple of minutes to do uh, the preliminaries, I suppose. Okay, um, just as regards yourself and keeping yourself, um, getting yourself ready for the exam, make sure you have a bottle of water in there. It's thirsty work. Um, chocolate sweets or other small snacks. So something that is something that you can chew on, um, just something to give you a little bit of energy. It's it's for for uh, junior certs, it's a two hour exam, and for the leaving certs, it's a two and a half hour exam um, per paper. So it's a long time in there without eating anything, and you will need you will definitely need energy. So chocolate or sweets um, to give you energy. On the day of your exam, so you can see there, we have a nice little alarm clock. We want to wake up in time. Um, so in order to wake up in time, we need to go to bed at a normal hour. So don't do anything differently, I would say. Um, don't put any, any pressure on yourself. Go to bed at the time that you normally would. Um, get your sleep, switch off your phone, switch off your tablet. Don't have any distractions and make sure that you get your your um, normal sleep that you would get on a normal night. Set an alarm, vital. We don't want you heading into your exam late. We don't want you waking up halfway through the exam. So set your alarm clock and always have a backup person as well to call you just in case, as we know, it doesn't always work to plan, just in case your alarm doesn't go off for whatever reason. So have somebody ready to call you in case your alarm doesn't get off. Give yourself plenty of time in the morning, on the morning of the exam. So give yourself plenty of time to get a good breakfast into you so that you're not rushing out the door and forgetting some of your things. So have your bag packed the night before with your mat set, with your calculator, with your pens and pencils in there also. And as I mentioned, have a good breakfast or a lunch if it's an afternoon exam, but don't eat anything too heavy that is going to have you nodding off um, in the middle of the exam. So get a good, healthy and hearty breakfast or lunch into you as well. 
On the day of your exam, get there. So get to your exam center in good time. Again, we don't want you rushing in the door. So get to your exam center in good time. Know where your um, where your seat is and just be familiar, get familiar with your surroundings. Have a look at your notes. So go back over your notes, but there's no point on the morning or the afternoon of your exam in starting to do uh, questions at that stage. Just have a look over some brief notes that you may have made um, for yourself. Avoid stressing, okay? So um, at this stage, I suppose all of your hard work is done. So on the day of your exam, you've done all the hard work. You've done all of the hard work over the previous two or three years. Um, you know what you know at this stage and it's up to you then to show the examiner what you know. So it's getting it down on paper, what you know. Um, try maybe, maybe they work for you, some breathing or relaxation or mindfulness exercise, okay? So take a couple of deep breaths, try to relax yourself, okay? It's normal that you're going to be a little bit anxious going into the exam, but when that paper is put down in front of you, relax, and just give it your all. Have a positive frame of mind. As I mentioned, the hard work is done by now and you know exactly what you know. You've studied your past papers, you've studied your notes, you've done all of the hard work in class and at homework and in studying and now it's up to you to show that examiner, the person that's correcting your paper, exactly what you know. Plan to give 100% effort for the full duration of the exam. So that two and a half hours or that two hours that will fly in the exam. You'll be surprised how quickly the time goes, but give 100% effort for the full duration of the exam, okay? Um, if you watched our previous video, and you can access it there on the mathstutor.ie, we did go through timings and the structure of the exam, and next week's part three will also go through a bit of time management. So give your 100% for every single question that you're doing. You might as well, this is the last hurdle, and like I said, you, all of the hard work is done. Take one question at a time. So don't be thinking about the next question and thinking to yourself, oh, I can't do that, or I didn't study that, it's fine. And if you're a Leaving Cert student, you have your the beauty of the choice in the exam this time as well. Okay guys, so as I mentioned, um, that's it for part two of our webinars on exam technique. Tune in over the next couple of weeks for part three and part four where we look at time management and how best to avoid errors in the exam. And um, webinar part one will be available on the mathstutor.ie. Um, and as I mentioned also, the exam technique booklet is there for free if you go to the mathstutor.ie forward slash booklet. So hopefully you found that of some use to you and thanks for tuning in.